Um, and, and so maybe talk a little bit about just like, at what point did you realize like, I'm actually conducting business here, right? I'm actually an entrepreneur. It's not just me with like a bunch of side hustles. Like th there's a structure to this and I can do this in any industry, right? Whether it's DJing, whether it's with shoes, whether it's with jewelry, like it's the same thing over and over again, just in different industries and creating value. So what happened was I never worked in anything I didn't actually have an interest in. People have a hard time becoming successful in one career, like you said, right? I had a successful, I, I was successful in three careers. Okay. And one of those careers being two side careers, you know, um, this is how it goes. I never had a wealth manager or a CPA to advise me on how to incorporate myself. And once I learned how to incorporate myself and do things like that, I was like, Oh my God, why the fuck didn't somebody tell me this you know, a long time ago? Like I just fucked off, you know, like, one, it would have saved me enormous amount of money on taxes and whatever and things like that. But um, from music early on, I saw where I missed opportunities to make money. I could have sold mixtapes here. Boom. What if I sold 5,000 mixtapes? Well, it cost me nothing but my labor and some basic costs. Boom. Okay. There's obviously the cost to buy cassettes. Da, da, da. And these are real mixtapes. Right now, that's like some bullshit. We're talking about real mixtapes that were like, you know, like, they were blended through and there was this and that. Then people elevated it and then all of a sudden they call it mixtape. It's part of a record label and it's like not a mixtape. It's like songs, there's no skip. It was just different. So anyways, going on, I realized the missed opportunities I had as a record executive. When I became a solo DJ, I started to understand, all right, how important it is to market myself. So if you remember that movie, American Pie, is that what it's called? I forgot what the dude's name was. But he told that one chick, Natasha Leon, I think, to tell everybody he had a really big penis or something, right? And it was like a boom. And it was like a rumor went around. And like, in a way, I was telling people, oh, you know, man, yeah, you know, I'm getting paid like five, six hundred dollars a night. Five hundred was definitely be, was Mark Ronson. Nobody was getting paid that much at a nightclub back then in the, in the 90s. And like, I was telling people, yeah, man, you know, it's crazy, man. I'm going to Paris next week to go DJ this, this and this. And I was making up these stories, but I was doing it because I had no other way to promote myself. And people were like, yo, what? And it wasn't like, it's Instagram. Like, oh, where's the pictures at? There's no fucking cameras back then. Like, you, they barely had the disposable cameras back then. But no one had, no one really carried, you know, you had, like, guys who had real professional photos. But it was like, you know, it wasn't that common to have, to take pictures of your, of your, I mean, sometimes, yeah. But me, it just wasn't, I know I'm Asian. People are like, oh, the cameras. That was a big joke back in the 80s, you know, 90s and 70s. You know, Japanese people always have cameras around. Whatever. Anyways, I didn't have one. So I started marketing. And I developed this folklore of Ben Baller being bigger than he was. It landed me a job in Vegas at the Hard Rock Hotel Casino. I ended up getting a billboard there. That started, you know, started doing, and I started taking out ads in newspapers, the LA Weekly and smaller ads. Like, hey, boom, you know, Ben Baller is doing this this week. Boom, it'll be at Dragonfly, it'll be here. And um, I started to realize that was good. Then the sneaker thing was part of my DJing because I was DJing, I was selling weed. The weed money that was cash was going into sneakers. The sneakers, when they got sold or whatever they did, I've washed the cash at that point. They weren't checking shit like that back in the day. eBay wasn't even fucking charging you a fee. PayPal didn't charge nothing. Now PayPal is making sure the taxes are done. You know what I mean? Like they're, they're hitting you. They're recording everything. It wasn't like that back then. You know, even on eBay, eBay had a feature where you were able to look. Let's say, for instance, I'm like, oh, I want to see what Pomp is buying today. Uh oh shit, Pomp bought some KY jelly. He bought two pairs of Nikes. The specific things, I could see everything you bought. I could see the things you're even watching. It was crazy. It was super, you know, like invasive of your privacy. But I was able to like, you know, just, I understood like, all right, I got this little thing here. Okay, let's make some t-shirts. And I'm going to say they're limited edition. I only made a hundred. Nobody fucking knew I made 500, whatever it was. And we did it and they sold out. And so that was another hustle. And then I created a crew, um, Air Max crew. There's a, a sneaker called the Air Max. But then there's the term Mac, which is sort of like a pimp, M-I-C-K. So I call ourselves the Air Max crew. So we were like the Nike pimp crew, right? It was me, this guy named DJ Homicide, who was very famous. He was in a group called Sugar Ray, an enormous rock band, pop band. Um, and then DJ Am, rest in peace, who was my boy. And uh, we had an honorary member who no one even knows this. His name is Demaney. 
he owned Flight Club. He started Flight Club. At this time, it was called Vintage Kicks. You know, he sold his company for $60 million. It's a lot of money, you know. So we had this crew. I was doing appearances. I was able to market myself without a manager. I had an email address that was my acting manager. No one ever met this person. He's like Charlie from Bucket Charlie's Angels, right? And um, I was just able to, 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 you know, keep elevating myself. But as basketball happened, I told you, I wish I had another year. I wish I had another year. This where I'm at, you know, I wasn't a rapper or certain things where like, you know, after you turn 30, you're like washed up. You don't want to hear your music anymore. Like, oh, you know, they're not talking about drugs and guns anymore and blah, blah. It's harder as you get older to be a rapper to stay credible and stay relevant. So, you know, I never looked at it, the entrepreneur side until I sold my collection and I realized, holy shit, I could have did this a long time ago and not have to sell an entire bulk. I could have did this in a different way, but I understood at that point, anything I'm passionate about, I'm going to find a way to make money. So when I started the jewelry business, even that, I said, we got to create a separate name. We have Friendster and we have MySpace to promote it. And then we have the traditional stuff. We can put flyers out and do certain things or whatever. I could start marketing it, putting on celebrities, of course, that's the best promotion, whatever. And I started realizing, okay, we're big. We got so big that I have co my company, which stands for Internally Flawless and Company. Internally Flawless is technically the best diamond you could possibly get in the world. Our company was originally called IC Fresh and Co. I C E E, and we were using the IC logo like it's I C I C E E. It's all melted with ice and everything. And then we had Fresh in a, a engraver's font, which is like the, the cash money font. And I had them together and putting this out there. I see the the slushy corporation sees that when you Google I see, we were coming up in the top five. They want to own the top twenty on Google. So they send a cease and desist to us because they're saying that we're confusing people because we're talking about ice and stuff. I'm like, well, ice is a fucking, is a slang for, for diamonds. You know what I mean? Slang for jewelry. And they're like, okay, we don't care. That happens. Boom. We have to restructure. And at that point I said, all right, man, look, you want to get big. Okay. Tiffany and Coda to sell t-shirts. They don't need to, they have the turquoise box. That's their marketing thing. Right. What do we have? All right. We need to go out here and market this shit. So we're making plastic pieces. I started making t-shirts. So doing this. that became, I was making enough side shit that wasn't jewelry. Well, technically the plastic things were t-shirts that was taking care of our entire payroll, that hustle. So everything else now is just cream on the top. You know what I'm saying? It's fucking icing, literally pun intended. Right? So I, um, I started to realize, Hey man, you know, I and co is dope. But what about Ben Baller, the brand? So I just started to market myself after 08. And, you know, it just every, you know, five years or so, even less, I elevate what I'm doing. 